Next, we'll look at relations and their properties. So if A and B are sets, a binary relation from A to B is a subset of A cross B. So it's just a set of ordered pairs. So in other words, a binary relation from A to B is a set R of ordered pairs where the first element from each ordered pair comes from A and the second element comes from B. So functions are special cases of relations. Relations are the more general type. We'll use this notation ARB to denote that AB is in R. In addition, when AB belongs to R, A is said to be related to B by R. So let's let A be equal to 0, 1, 2, B be equal to AB. Then we have this relation, 0A, 0B, 1A, and 2B is a relation. So for instance, 0 is related to A, however 1 is not related to B since the point 1B is not in here. And for now we'll look at two different ways to represent relations, using arrows and using a table. So my first way is using the arrow diagrams, the same thing I did with functions. We'll draw an arrow from 0 to A, since 0A is in there, from 0 to B, since 0B is in there, from 1 to A, and then from 2 to B. And the relations don't have the conditions that functions have, so this point of 0 is fine. The table always lists A down the side and B across the top, and then you just put a little X for elements that are in there, so 0A, 0B, 1A, and 2B. We can also have a relation on a set. This is a relation from A to itself. So for example, let's let A be the set 1, 2, 3, 4. We want to know which ordered pairs are in our relation, A, B, such that A divides B. So I need the first number to evenly divide into the second number. Well, we can start with 1. 1 divides into itself, divides into 2, 3, and 4. 2 will divide into 2 and 4. 3 divides into 3, and 4 divides into 4. So we have this set of ordered pairs. We can put this in both table and arrow form. So 1 divides everything, so it gets an arrow to all four numbers. There's also an x in all four of the columns in the first row. 2 divides 2 and 4, so we see that in both the arrow diagram and the table. 3 divides 3 and 4 divides 4. We see that in both diagrams. So we're going to look at four different properties that relations can have. The first one being reflexive. So we call it reflexive if A, A is an R for ele the element A and A. So basically these double points, points that repeat themselves. So we'll consider these relations. Since I have four points, I'm looking for the points 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4, 4. And I need all four of these. So for instance, this first set has 1, 1, and 2, 2, but no 3, 3. So this one is not reflexive. This one has 1, 1, but not 2, 2. This one has 1, 1, 2, 2. 3, 3, and 4, 4, so it will be reflexive. The next one, no, doesn't have any of the double points. R5 has 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4, 4, so it is. And we can see R6 is missing these points. So we have that R3 and R5 are both reflexive. Next we'll look at symmetric. So a relation is said to be symmetric if BA is in R whenever AB is in R. So basically we should be able to flip these points and it still be in there. Anti-symmetric happens whenever AB is in R and BA is in R implies that A is equal to B. So basically symmetric says it contains all of the flipped pairs 
whereas anti-symmetric says it contains none of them unless it's a double point. So for example, here R1 has 1, 1, and 2, 1, so that's good. However, it has 3, 4, but no 4, 3, so it's not symmetric. In addition, since it did have one flipped point, it's not anti-symmetric either. So this one is neither. The second one, 1, 1 flipped is 1, 1. And then 1, 2 flipped is 2, 1. So this one is symmetric. 1, 2 flipped is 2, 1. 1, 4 flipped is 4, 1. We can see 1, 1 is 1, 1, 2, 2 gives me 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. So this one is also symmetric. My next one, I have 2, 1, but not 1, 2, 3, 1, but not 3, 1, 3, 3, 2, but not 2, 3, 4, 1, but not 1, 4, 4, 2, but not 2, 4, and then 4, 3, but not 3, 4. So this one is anti-symmetric because it doesn't flip any of them. My next one, I have 1, 1. I have 1, 2, but not 2, 1. I have 1, 3, but not 3, 1. 1, 4, but not 4, 1. 2, 3, but not 3, 2. 2, 4, but not 4, 2. And then 3, 4, but not 4, 3. So this one is also anti-symmetric. In addition, so is R6, since we have 3, 4, but not 4, 3. So R2 and R3 are symmetric. R4, R5, and R6 are anti-symmetric. My last property is called transitive. So this happens whenever AB is in R and BC is in R, then AC is in R for all A, B, and C. So this is the hardest one to check. For example, here I have 1, 2, and 2, 1. So when I combine these two, I get 1, 1. That's in there. I have 1, 2, and 2, 2, which would give me 1, 2, which is in there. I have 2, 1, and 1, 2, which would combine to give me 2, 2, which is in there. I have 3, 4, and 4, 1, which would sh should combine to give me 3, 1, which is not in there. So this one is not transitive. In addition here, 2, 1, and 1, 2 should combine to give me 2, 2, which is not in there. R3, I have 1, 2, and 2, 1, which would give me 1, 1. I have 1, 4, and 4, 1, which would give me 1, 1. And I have 2, 1, and 1, 2, which would give me 1, 1. Or it would give me 2, 2. This one is transitive. R3, well, or R4, sorry. 2, 1 can't combine with anything. 3, 1 can't combine with anything. 3, 2 and 2, 1 would combine to give me 3, 1. 4, 1 can't combine. 4, 2 and 2, 1 gives me 4, 1. And then 4, 3 and 3, 1 gives me 4, 1. In addition, 4, 3 and 3, 2 would give me 4, 2. So this one is transitive. The next one, 1, 2 and 2, 3 would give me 1, 3. 1, 2, and 2, 4 gives me 1, 4. 1, 3 would combine with 3, 4 to give me 1, 4. 2, 3, and 3, 4 gives me 2, 4. And I can try to combine everything else, but this one will be transitive. In addition, R6 is transitive by default. Also, I seem to be missing R3 here. I can also combine. So for example, I have R1 be equal to 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and R2 be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4. I can take the union, which just combines the sets. I can take the intersection, and looks at which points they have in common. 
And then I can also take the differences. So R1 minus R2. This is all the points in R1 that are not in R2. And R2, R1, all the points in R2 that are not in R1.